Hi, y'all. Katie Parker, alcoholic. I saw it, babe. <laughs> it's a bottle of water. All right, let me get my little timer here working. Oh, the whole thing turned off. Lee, are we up? All right. Oh, my gosh, I am so excited to be here. i got to tell you guys, being at 5 o'clock is hard for me. I am like the horse that's in the cage getting ready to do the race. I'm out there. <laughs> you know, if you ever watch those horses line up, you, you know, every once in a while you got one quiet one. Otherwise, I am the one that says, open that gate, baby. And, uh, oh, my God, i I, I got to tell you guys something. It is such an honor to be here. Uh, this roundup is so special, and Jimmy and Mary Beth are very special people to us. We love them with all our heart, and you know, Jimmy, he, he's an email and fool when it comes to this event, and, and if all you have to do is have shown any interest and you get on the email list, you're going to get a flyer, and one of the things that's so cool, though, is he always sends the flyer, and I always look at his lineup, and I can feel the spiritual guidance in that lineup. I mean, that's somebody who knows who to put, where to put, when to put them, and that is so God-driven. I just love it, and I think you put everybody in such the right spot. I, uh, I love you guys today. Cynthia picked us up at the airport. She's quite a New Jersey driver. I felt right at home. <laughs> there's, a, there's a drift. You just drift at about 80. <laughs> drift, and we're going to drift, and we're going to drift. And every once in a while, I just would tell myself, just look at her. Just let's look at her. Uh, we did really well, and we got here, and everything was all great. And, uh, you know, Bobby did a fantastic job last night. I can't not talk about the speakers. I know it cuts into all of our time, and we want to be quick about it. But I, I just have to say, Bobby, you did a wonderful job. Where are you sitting? Is he not here? Mm -hmm. There we have that. So much for Bobby. Mike, your history presentation was remarkable. As most people know, I, I don't care for history. And uh, you, I'm telling you, I have fallen asleep through a few history presentations, and Gail has always won my heart on the history, and you are right there, man. That was remarkable. It was to win my heart over on history. AA history is the only history I like to look at other than uh, my own. And, uh, and then Ellen. Oh, my God, Ellen. Ellen and I would be sisters if in another world, but we'd be hair pulling sisters. You know what I mean? And I love Ellen. Ellen and I have a very special relationship and we love to we love humor in place of life. You know what I mean? I mean when it gets hard times, just find some humor and it just it just warms my heart. I just love her death. And of course my husband did a spectacular job on one and two. Oh my God I typed the notes. I was quite impressed. I was like, uh-huh, and then you go into that and you roll into that. Oh, honey, good, hit it, hit, lick the finger, flip the page. Loving what you're doing. Uh, and I just, oh, my God, he did so wonderful. And I told him, I said, we've got to get these notes done. Of course, we're doing it, you know, right before the event, but that, 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 the way I work best. Um, and then my sweet Ronnie. Mm, Ronnie, I have always felt I needed to be a part of the White family. And, uh, you know, they're all named, they're, all their first names are with an R, and that, I, you know, we all know that I could be Rosie, <laughs> Rosie White. Let, let me in there, please. And I just, I just love the white boys to death. And i got to tell you something. Being behind this podium, I didn't know what came with it, other than the fact it can kill you. Okay, I learned that real early on. But the other thing I found out about being behind this podium is you find a life with the speakers that you didn't know you could have. It's an entire family. And when we travel together, we get to see each other, we get to meet each other. It's, it is the coolest thing ever. And Charlie and I didn't know that was happening. And every once in a while, Charlie and I have to travel separately. And we don't do it very often because we don't want to do it very often. We, we let people know that we'll always typically be together, you know, and that's just the way we roll. But Ronnie and I were speaking at a very big conference together about 2,500 people. And uh, in the midst of this conference, one of the other speakers, I felt, took a pot shot at me. Go ahead, you can make a noise. <laughs> wow, what a bad idea that is. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, <laughs> can't believe that. That was a direct hit. And uh, so I, and you'll love how I did this, I thought, you know what, I'm going to call some people and do a 10-step because I'm pretty disturbed. 
So I called about six of my buddies that really didn't care for this particular individual either. <laughs> and they were six pretty heavy hitters. And uh, they really did a terrible job on a 10th step, but I loved it because they said, well, we don't really care much for that individual anyway. And I thought, well, 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 in those calls, one was to Ronnie. And Ronnie was, didn't answer. And so about three days later, he calls me back and he goes, hey, I'm sorry I couldn't get back with you. How you doing? What's up? And I said, oh, Ronnie, it's all good. I just wanted to tell you how much I love you and it was great seeing you. He goes, bullshit. <laughs> what? And he goes, you called me for something else. I said, well, you know, so-and-so took a pot shot at me. And I swear, we're like, we're seven. And, uh, and I said, and you know, I just blah, 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 blah. And he gave me a gift. And he said, you know, Katie, your form of AA is not for everybody. Not everybody hears your message. And they may need to have heard that other person's message. We cannot play God in this role. And it, it changed everything for me, Ronnie. It really did. It changed everything for me. Because I began to realize, you see, for some of us, when we find out the message out of the big book, we become these warriors. And, and, it, and the book tells me clearly I am to grow in understanding and effectiveness. And let me tell you, if you're a real warrior and you're coming out there straightening an AA out, you are not being effective. It's just not the way to approach an alcoholic is to just pop them in the nose, right? We don't listen to that message. And so from that point on, I started opening my talks, and I'll do it here, is if you're all about the big book, great. And if you're not, great. There's no fighting in the lifeboat. Let people make their own journey and do their own thing. Let them say in an AA meeting something that is totally off. We don't have to straighten the world out. It's not the best use of our time, I don't think. And the other thing about Ronnie and, and, and was when, when he had the situation that he was talking about and, and the fall, he, he personally called me. I was one of five people he called. I remember where I was. I remember what I was wearing. And I remembered how honored I was that he would call me and tell me, look, the news is going to come out that I've, I've lost my license. And I'm telling you, Ronnie, that, that meant so much to me. I just love you with all my heart. And... Uh, and when Ronnie was talking, you know, he, he uh, mentioned Charlie about 800 times. He mentioned Kent about 900 times. And, and he mentioned Debbie four, and he mentioned me one. Because I was counting. I'm like, well, this thing may only go one way, huh? No. I, you know, I, I'm driven to do that. That is not new information, as my sponsor likes to say. I have a scorecard. And she said, oh, 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 and he did. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And that's what I've done all my life. This is not new information. So the sixth step couldn't be any more perfect for me, right? And learning how to do, how to operate with the DNA that I have. I love me some Ronnie. Uh, and Debbie, oh my gosh, we are literally soul sisters. We have had the privilege of being at a lot of places together. I'm still amazed that she can get everything in one small suitcase. I, I can't, and she can. But we were at a, an event called The Gathering. It was, a very, it was kind of a think tank for a lot of speakers. We all went there on our own dime to talk about what we thought AA could do. Well, there are no leaders, so we're not going to be changing Alcoholics Anonymous. But I got to meet her lovely husband, Kent, and it was just a really cool event event but what was interesting is when they got home they must have said we'd like Charlie and Katie to come do a traditions and concepts workshop on relationship well, I told Charlie I'm like we know nothing <laughs> about the traditions and the concepts and I'm like you know what I'm just going to tell them we're busy well then they gave me another date no no see we're busy then too and uh yeah, this is me with my 35 years sober. Can I lie? Yes, I can. And so then I finally had to come clean and go, we know nothing about the traditions and relationships and the concept. And that's humbling, guys. Now, I'd love to tell you that I jumped right out and learned everything. No, I did not. No, I did not. I'm learning slowly with Debbie doing them, and then I'm just kind of, I'm absorbing it like a sponge. And then Kent, is Kent in here? Okay, make a list. Make a list. <laughs> Well, Kent is going to show up late, I'm sure. But I'm telling you, I had to follow him one other time, and it was at Founder's Day. 
And I've never seen anybody with the energy that I have. So I've always kind of had that little, little spot in my pocket. It's like, well, I can. <laughs> and then Kent got up there and I thought, holy smokes, he is not going to be an easy one to follow. So he's not here, so it's all good. We'll talk about him. <laughs> and then, of course, we have Lee, my favorite taper. One of the reasons I'm going into these introductions for a long time is because they've done such an outstanding job on three and four. I get to just barely tap on them with six and seven. Lee, Lee and I go way back. And Lee has always gotten me, tried to get me for girl stock and all of this stuff for girl stock. And I love to do the third step. That's actually my favorite step to do. And uh, so they called me for girl stock and they said, we'd like you to do six and seven. And I've never done six and seven. And I've got to tell you guys, it's not an easy step to talk on because it's so experiential. It's a very difficult one, if you ask me. And I thought, oh, no. So I called my buddy Lorenz. I said, Mike, they want me to do six and seven. And he's like, Katie, this is so cool. Let's, let's just see what happens, you know? And I'm, I'm looking it over, and I'm, I'm thinking, oh, I really don't want to do this. And I was at the Liberty Bell, and I saw Lee, and I went up to Lee, and I said, you know, Lee, I don't really want to do six and seven. I'd much rather do the third step. Now, this is me running the show. Does that sound familiar to anybody? And, 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 and I'm a woman, so self-reliance works. <laughs> Lee, you know, I just do better at three. And he goes, you know what, Katie, you're right. You would screw up six and seven. You remember saying that to me? Yes, you did. You said, you would screw up six and seven. You can have three. I thought, thank you. I go strutting out of there. I walk up. Lorenz is sitting on the couch. I said, wow, Mike, I just told Lee I wanted three instead of six and seven, and I got three. And Lorenz goes, Oh, Katie, that's too bad. He goes, I wonder what God had planned for you in six and seven. <laughs> I march back in there because I am now the producer of confusion rather than harmony. And I said, Oh, Lee, give me six and seven. And so what we did is Charlie's sponsees, my sponsees, myself, my sponsor, we all went on a mission. And we just kind of studied the 12 and 12. And we studied everything. And it's interesting. You'll see what we came up with. But before I get started, I do want to tell you I've been sober since October the 28th of 1984. For that, I am truly grateful. I celebrated uh, last week 35 years sober. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, I got sober when I was 26. I know pitiful, incomprehensible demoralization. I had a five-year-old. I was a single mom. I know, I know value say you don't do that with a child. You drag a kid around and it's real quick that you see something's wrong. Something's really wrong with me. And I got to tell you something about, uh, I'm still blown away that I have 35 years sober. I got sober when I was 26 years old and, and uh, I'm 61 years old. I, I do love getting older. I mean, I, there's a lot of people out there that don't like getting older. I'm like, man, figure that one out because that's what's happening every day. And... Uh, <laughs> But, you know, I mean, I love getting older, and I mean, yeah, the hair, the skin, the eyes, that kind of sucks. But other than that, man, this thing, I wouldn't give up for a million bucks. I mean, getting off the floor is a little more difficult. It's kind of a three-point move, right? You've got to put the left hand down the foot, and then you kind of pop the hip up, and you stand up. Now, you don't move right away. And then you go. Okay, everything's kind of settled. You know, it's a lot different. I swear, some of these uh, hotels in the shower, to, you know, I got to sit down to shave and then you got to stand up and you're like, well, I'm not really quite sure how to do this. There was a time Charlie used to say, you're like a gazelle, you just pop up. Not anymore, baby. But I do love getting older and, and uh, I do believe you should take care of the temple. That's something I grew up with believing and, and, and I've, I've done it. You know, I mean, it's interesting because the sixth step plays a, a vital role in all of that what you're powerless over, what you can actually do, what you can't do. As most of you know, I do have more sobriety time than my husband. I have five and a half months more sober than my husband. A lot of times people say, time doesn't matter. Damn sure does. Damn sure does. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's funny because when Charlie's struggling, I just tell him, honey, just hang in there. In about five and a half months, it'll make a little more sense to you. Just not that far away. My home group is the primary purpose group in Austin, Texas on Tuesday nights, 2701 South Lamar. We, are, we love our meeting. You know, one of the cool things, like Charlie said, we study the book line by line. And 
what, the way we do it, there's a question for every line in the book. But what I love about the meeting that's different now there's, we, is that we try to get people to not share their experience. We want to talk about the text, not your experience with the text. There's nothing wrong with sharing your experience in another meeting about the text, but this particular meeting we're trying to understand what the founders found necessary to put in the doctor's opinion in 164 pages. It's kind of interesting when you look at the book as the text and you teach the text, that's kind of what we're looking at. It would be no different than me saying, uh, you know what, uh, Cynthia, tell me how to get to New York City from here. And you wouldn't tell me about your drive there. Oh, we had a blast. We stopped at Sonic. You know, la, la, la. You would tell me the directions of how to get there. So that's what we do. It's a little difficult because we are a day and age of oral alcohol, oral AA. So if we're not careful, nobody's pulling the book out. Nobody's talking about the book. And then, you know, it's the game of telephone. Uh, I have uh, four grandchildren. And I have to tell you something about these grandkids. I don't know about you guys, but grandkids are God's do-over for the drunk, are they not? I mean, they innately love you. Oh, yeah. And I mean, love me. It's like, Ryder, go brush your teeth. He's like, I'm on it. Love it. Life is great, right? And I mean, this kid, we have so much fun with our grandkids. There are 12, two eight-year-olds that are cousin, and an almost three-year-old. And I mean, I just love it. Now, don't get me wrong. They're not coming to stay for a week. You know, I'm, I'm like a one-day girl, and we're out of here. Okay, yeah. All righty, all right. It's so funny. I like to go have lunch with Ryder. He's eight at his school. And uh, I stand there, and all the kids walk by, and they go, he comes, you know, twinkle toeing it in. It's like, oh, there she is. And the, the kids go, this is not fair. And I bend down, and I go, you know, the sooner you understand that, the better life will be. <laughs> yeah, life's not fair. Suck it up. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, my husband likes to say I'm a little bit like taking a drink out of a fire hose, man. Put your seatbelt on. You've been warned. You're not in the spit zone, so I'll be fine. I, I like to say I, I am the vessel to help you get connected to the power. I am not the power. I don't know what job you should have, what boy you should date, although I do think I do know that, but what job you should have, what car you should drive, I don't have the answers to that, but I can get you unblocked to where you can hear the power tell you what you need. So I'm merely the vessel to help you get connected to the power. One of the other cool things that I love is, I, I didn't know this till several years ago, the big book was named by the Library of Congress as one of 88 books that shaped America. Is that unbelievable? One of 88 books. I know it. And, and I like to follow that up with saying, am I sat on the shelf for 15 years? And I, there was a collective groan somewhere when I said that. And I went, oh, like yours hasn't, for God's sake. been carrying this baby since day one. You know, I've had 19 of them. No, you haven't. Uh, I like to consider myself a big book technician. I've always been a fan of that word. I, I, like to, I like to talk about the text and the implications of what the text is about. I think that is so helpful because if all we ever talk about is my experience, I'll use my experience when I see fit, but I am going to find out where you made decisions based on self that later placed you in a position to be hurt. That's what my job is. I'm the suicide hotline. I'm the 10th step girl. Your job is to call me when you're in trouble. I'm not the sponsor. Now, this is how I sponsor. I'm not the sponsor that's going to be at your baby shower, be at your wedding. I'm not going to do all those things. I am going to be the one that you call when you have trouble. I'm not interested in you checking in on me. That's, and you know the reason why is because I get too close. And if I get too close to you, I totally lose perspective. All of a sudden, I don't like the clothes you're wearing. I don't like the boy you're dating. You see what I mean? All that starts to get really muddy. There's something I like to read because the sixth step is all about the elimination or not elimination, the, the reduction of the ego. I call it pride. If ego, pride, you can call it whatever you want. My name is Pride. I am a cheater. I cheat you out of your God-given destiny because you demand your own way. I cheat you out of contentment because you deserve better than this. I cheat you out of knowledge because you already know it all. I cheat you out of holiness because you refuse to admit when you're wrong. I cheat you out of genuine friendship because nobody's going to know the real you. I cheat you out of love because real romance demands sacrifice. My name is Pride. I am a cheater. You may think I'm always looking out for you. Oh, untrue. I'm looking to make a fool of you. And that's what my pride, my 
pride will always try to destroy me. It, it is so crafty. Ellen used it, several examples. I like those. I consider it a shapeshifter. See, I'm, I'm, looking at a, I'm looking for a dog, and all of a sudden a bird flies by, and I go, oh, no, I'm not looking for that. It's this one. And the ego is so crafty, constantly trying to destroy me. Dr. Bob said, <clears throat> the directions in our book are clear cut. However, everybody has a different experience. Right? That's one of the reasons why experience is so important, but you must understand the directions. Because it, I'm the ego turned outward, right? I am the alpha female. That's, is that hard to see? I mean, I can walk in a room and you sense that I'm an alpha female. I, I have a very loud quiet. <laughs> right? And then you get somebody who wouldn't say peep. They go to a, they go to a party and, and you don't even know they were there. They fly in stealth, right? They come in, they land. They're up and they're out. And somebody goes, did you meet Mary? Mary who? They tell me exactly what I never even saw her. She was so, so invisible. Now, the, here's the deal. We're both alcoholic. It doesn't make me any more alcoholic than her. It doesn't make me any more self-centered than she is. It's the different ways that self shows up. So we have to identify who you are. Most people will say, I'm a little bit of both. I haven't met that person yet. <laughs> I know you think that. You're either one or the other. You can have a little bit of both, but it's like my quiet. You know when I'm quiet, I'm pissed. So I'm not going to call that the ego turned inward. The ego turned inward is like Eeyore, right? Walking around, where's my tail? Anybody seen my tail? It's lost. Everything is self-pity, riddled with self-pity. Very important that you know what dog you're walking. Uh, the, the other thing, too, is about this oral AA. The sixth step is all experiential, right? We need the directions on how to get there. And the thing is, is the 12 and 12 is a very good book. Nothing against the 12 and 12. I think it's a good book. I think sometimes it stands in the way of the great, which is our basic text. The 12 and 12 has got some interesting directions, some, some, uh, some concepts that I think are, are interesting. I, I don't think necessarily I need it for 6 and 7. It didn't hurt to read it for 6 and 7. But I just spent 75 pages learning about my defects, my DNA, how Katie operates. I don't need gluttony. I don't need all of those things. I need to know how I show up in the world. I need to know that I can sit here and count how many times Ronnie said my name. See, that's a big problem. Can you imagine that? And, and I think I'm in a room full of people who are doing that, right? I mean, you've already judged me on a hundred things I've said. And I mentioned the 12 W. Oh, there she goes. Yep, there she goes. I mentioned this, oh, there it is. I knew it. Mm -hmm. She's one of them. And, I mean, that's just what we do. The way we are wired is so deeply judgmental. That's why we need each other. We judge like crazy. And it depends on how you show up, right? And I think the 12 and 12, it's an easy read, right? You can find out where the first step is. You can find out where the second step is. It's an easy read, and a lot of people tend to read it more than the big book. And the big book is where the directions are. Uh, the big book tells us when, how, and why to take a step. How fantastic is that? The promises are so beautiful. The sixth step is all about what is objectionable to me. There was a long time that I used to believe it has to become objectionable to me for me to decide to move off the mark. I've changed my mind on that stance in the last year. Some of Charlie's behavior is so deeply objectionable to me that he needs to change. You with me on that? So here's an interesting statistic. How many of you guys are currently married? That's shocking. <laughs> Why? Because we are incapable of forming a true partnership with another human being. Now, how many of y'all have been married before? Yeah, just about everybody. Yeah, there we go. We got the wave happening. And here's the deal. There are certain relationships where the behavior must become, if the behavior is uh, 
just out of line. We can look at many things, right? For men, it's pornography. For women, it can be spending money. I mean, it's all kinds of things. If that behavior starts to cause the family a disjoint, we have to realize that that's going to have to become objectionable. Does that make more sense? Because the sixth step, is, I think, is very misunderstood. Am I willing to let God change in whatever way he sees fit to change me? Lack of power is my dilemma. I cannot change me, period. You can work forever trying to trim the branches, but we have to get down to the root cause. I worked, and I loved it. Kent said it. Uh, Ronnie said it. Worked a program based on alcohol being the problem. You can't not. And people will nod their head with four, five, six, seven years going, I know I'm not working a program based on alcohol being the problem. Yeah, you are. You just, you grow into this second surrender of the third step. You see some of the glaring self-centeredness, but I don't think till after you're out of what I call your teenage years do you ever really begin to see the depth of that self-centeredness. It is shocking, guys. Shocking. And not one of us gets to miss it. It's, I mean, and I sponsor half the goddamn country. Let me tell you, I, I can talk to you for, for five minutes and know how much sobriety time you have. It's like raising children, right? A three-year-old's going to act like a three-year-old. These teenage years are some of the hardest years to try to wake somebody up because you know what? You know it all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you walk away and you go, yeah, what an idiot. You know what I mean? I already knew all that stuff, she told me. I mean, it's, it is the hardest time to wake someone up. And the book is all about, you know, uh, selfishness and self-centeredness. I was voted most likable four years in a row in high school. That is a big flipping deal. You know what I mean? And I remembered reading that thinking, well, that is not me. I mean, how do you become most likable to the world and be selfish and self-centered? I'm a giver. That's what I saw myself as. I'm just a giver. Now, Charlie was my best friend. He was clearly self-centered, right? Charlie and I knew each other. He had six months and I had a year, as it should be. And... Uh, and when I was sitting with my husband and when I heard Charlie share in a meeting, I leaned over to Joe and I said, oh my God, he is so funny. Let's, let's meet him and become friends. And we became fast friends. It was unbelievable. And as most of you know, I, I'm a widow. I lost my husband after 20 years in this program. It was devastating. Uh, Joe ended up uh, uh, relapsing at 23 years and died of a heroin overdose. And, and we were Mr. and Miss AA, five meetings a week. We were in the throes of this deal. Who would have known it was untreated alcoholism? I mean, my job here, and I asked God, I said, really, you want me to be the one that wakes him up on untreated alcoholism? He goes, yep, you're it. I'd much rather have you laughing. But the truth of the matter is, is we are sitting with a tremendous amount of people who are in this room with time, blotting out the intolerable situation of their life. That's just what we do. We're scared to death to tell anybody how much trouble we really are in. And, and, and here's what's tough, man. Uh, you know, you, you, go, you go, well, I'm not going to drink. And so who, who's, who's to say? You know, you step off the curb, you, you, you tear a tendon. All of a sudden, they're going to give you some strong medication if you tear a tendon. And you take that medication, it treats the malady, triggers the allergy. Next thing you know, man, you are popping pills. You're popping pills until you take that drink. And you would never have known that. How do I know it? Because I was there. I was right there in that spot, man. That is some dark, dark stuff. And uh, I love, I have to touch on the third and fourth step without, you, you can't do six without touching on all the steps. I think the sixth step is in every step. Uh, is he not a victim of the delusion that he can wrest satisfaction and happiness out of this world if he just manages well? That's most of the time where we will live and not even know it. Because I'm a victim. I'm tricked or duped by my own delusion. Listen to the definition of delusion. It's an impression that is firmly maintained despite being contradicted by what is accepted as reality. That typically a symptom of a mental disorder. Eh, rock on. Have a good day. That's what we suffer from, right? This delusional mind. See, you all of a sudden, let's say you ask somebody a question. Hey, did you tell so-and-so this? And they go, no. And you go, oh, they're lying. I mean... You've got the storyline already made up in your mind. You can't. I love when, when Ronnie said about his wife, about order. You've got a whole story. She's not going to order because she knows money's tight. She goes, oh, and then she doesn't. Whoa, 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 back it up, Billy, back it up. And that's what I mean. We don't even know we have this storyline until you bother me. 
See, that's the biggest problem of all. I don't realize that I've got this whole plan of action until you don't behave the way I think you should. And that's why the 10th step is so important. But you've got to know your DNA. You have to know who you are. You have to know the, the difficulties of the objectionable behavior. Uh, and then I love the rest where it says that he can rest satisfaction when it's seized by force, being right and happy. You hear that a lot. Would you rather be right or happy? I want to slap you when you ask me that question. What, do you want me to lie to you? I'll lie to you. I want to, I want, I'd like to just be, be happy. Oh, I want to be right. I'll kill both of us, okay? I mean, we are a group of people who stand on self-righteousness. Oh, I'm going to be right. Has anybody ever taken you on? Oh, man, game on. Game on. Depends on the day, too. Maybe a day that I'm spiritually fit. Maybe not. I worked a program based on alcohol being the problem. I really believe that if you get the... And, and the, one of the reasons I believe that is because I came into this fellowship and fell in love with the, the fellowship. Not everybody has that experience. My God, it's actually quite a few people... Uh, uh, very few people have it. How many of you guys, on the first meeting you came to, fell in love with AA? Raise your hand. Look at that. I mean, it's less than 20. And I just thought everybody did. I mean, I, I am a people person. I just fell in love. I chased a boy into the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. Thank God nobody was the arbiter of my sex life. I'm sitting at his feet while he's reading me the big book. It's wonderful. And I ended up being with that guy for 20 years. You know, I'm not, I'm not recommending it, but it did work for us. And I'm telling you, I loved Alcoholics Anonymous. I have always loved Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm one of the lucky ones. I had never known that. And then we, at the time, it was 1984, we were doing counseling, right? Codependency recovery therapy, right? What color is your parachute? Bradshaw, bring your stuffed animal into a meeting. Can you imagine the old timers? They were, I was making them crazy. I'm like, don't you talk about my bear. I'll never forget this one. He was all jaundice. And I remembered thinking, he jumped my ass in the middle of a meeting, and I remembered thinking, you'll be dead soon. <laughs> yeah. And welcome to the fellowship, okay? I'm just saying the things you're thinking. And uh, you know what? Today I realized, my God, my God, these guys were trying to help me. But I am stubborn. I am stubborn. I am, oh, I'll give you my list of character defects in a minute. And then I thought church was for uh, finding God. I'd always lean towards Western religion, nothing you know, wrong, Eastern, Western, whatever you want. That was what I did. See, counseling, the thing I misunderstood about counseling, and don't get me wrong, counseling's a gift. There's no doubt about it. It's a gift. But if you're not careful, what counseling will do will tell you who you're mad at in column one, what they did in column two, and what it affected in column three. They don't take you to the fourth column. Rarely are you going to get a counselor go, you know, you need to go clean that up with your dad. So I always say, take your counseling to your sponsor. Be sure you're, you're getting what we need to do in here. Because a lot of times, man, I, this is how I dealt with counseling. Say, Charlie hurt my feelings. I say, Charlie, you really hurt my feelings when you said that. And he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to. I go, well, you really did. Well, I am so sorry. And see, I feel better, and he doesn't. Okay. It's all good now. I'll walk away. <sighs> because we just need to tell everybody how we feel. Just as long as I tell you that. And see, that's where we misunderstand. I thought that was the answer. And let me tell you, I did that. I was the Ray Donovan of the world, man. I am a, I am a step, take a step forward kind of gal. If all of a sudden there's somebody at work that nobody likes, send me in. I'll get rid of them. And then I get rid of the person nobody likes and everybody's like... Thank you, thank you. No regard whatsoever to the other person's life. I made more amends in, uh, when I was in untreated alcoholism. I made more amends than I made when, from my drinking. And I've got to tell you guys, boy, when you wake up, you realize you've stepped on a tremendous amount of toes. It's very, very challenging. I, I love where it says in the third step, it says, uh, I'm almost always in collision with something or somebody even though my motives are good, Right? And then it says in the 10th step, we've ceased fighting anyone or anything. This position of neutrality is a total of 26 pages. It's this much. This is the action part of our program. This much. We will run from this. We will hide from this. We will sponsor more people. We will throw ourselves into service. Now, this is not bad. But remember what the third step's trying to tell me. Behind a kind motive, I'm almost always in collision with somebody or something. See, it's trying to wake me up to the kind motive. 
And that's what we're going to start talking about, this second surrender. What the third step does, it explains the many different ways that self shows up. And there's tons. Everybody's DNA is wired differently. And then I love where, where Ronnie and them did such a fabulous job talking about that we decide to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Our thoughts and our actions. This is cause and effect. Cause and effect. It will always be cause and effect. You get scared to death. You're gonna, you get a job. Let's say you get hired on at a job that you're not really qualified for. Does that sound unusual for us? Oh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the job. No shit. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. Woo! 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 I don't know anything. So you go into the job and you know nothing. And so you're scared to death and you screw up a ton. Right? You've brought that level of fear. Mo our motto should be I'm in over my head. Right? That's just our motto. And my life is a demonstration of an outward, my, my outward condition is a demonstration of my inward condition. I'm always trying to arrange what's going on out here to fix what's in here, and it doesn't work that way. And Charlie said, life's not coming at me, it's coming from me. Uh, the requirements are, the first requirement, I have to be convinced that any life run on self-will can hardly be a success. I'm not. I still am not sometimes today. It's like, oh, I need, some, I need 200 bucks, I'm going to get it. You know, that's what we do. You, you want me to set down the only tool I know, and that's self-will. You want me to set that down for some sort of silly spiritual toolkit? You've got to be kidding, man. Look at what my problems are. They pile up and become astonishingly difficult to solve. I am going to use self-will 8,000 times, and I'm going to have my ass handed to me 8,000 times. You would think we would learn. And based on where you are in sobriety is what happens is you quit doing the work and then you start feeling, you know, you, you quit doing the work, you feel bad, you start to do the work, right, 10 and 11, you start to do the disciplines, you get back into the work, you maybe make a few amends, you start to feel better, you quit doing it again. Do you have any idea how many years that goes on for? Mm, based on how many people I sponsor in the book, I will write. No, <laughs> I'm not going to write a book, because uh, that will get everybody in a tizzy. I'm not writing a book, okay, that was a joke. Uh, it takes about 12 to 15 years sober is a forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, but you're always edging forward, okay? You're still getting, it's like getting out of sand. And that's just the nature of it. It comes with maturity, it comes with sobriety age, it, and, you know, people are always talking about all the gifts of sobriety and all this. Yes, I'm about that too, but my God, if we're not talking about these highs and lows that you're going to hit, for if an alcoholic fails to enlarge his spiritual life through work and self-sacrifice for others, he cannot handle certain trials and low spots ahead. Cannot. They don't mince words here, guys. I'm telling you, when Joe got sick with the brain tumor, and then when he went back out, oh my God, you almost lost me. This was not great times. I'm in Alcoholics Anonymous five days a week, and I'm dying. And I am not alone in that, guys. I take it very seriously. There's so many people that I hope to wake up. It's when the crowd gets really quiet, too. Oh, shit, shit. Bringing the heat now. But I'm just so sick of seeing people go back out. You are going to hit tough times. You know why? Because life has challenging times. Raising kids is the hardest thing you'll ever do. They are a low-grade fever forever. <laughs> oh, my God. Everybody's like, oh, I want four. Well, you're crazy, okay? You're crazy. Not to mention, you're carrying an illness that you might just spread over all of them. Uh, uh, Ronnie's mom. Oh, my God. I mean, when he talks about her, my heart just is like, oh, my God, the sleepless nights. You see, this is, this is the way it is. I always like to try to wake people up. We're almost always in collision with something or somebody, even though my motives are good. You must wake up to these kind motives. We think we're such givers. Oh, I'm just a giver, just a people pleaser. I'm like, oh, people pleaser, huh? I'll tell you what, why don't we line up all the people you've pleased over here and, and just see how, how wonderful their life is since you've been in it. A couple of employees, you know. And when it's talking about this, and I like to explain what they're saying about this kind motive. See, I, once again, I don't know that I have a kind motive to you don't behave. Right? I'm like, I, and Ronnie's example of his wife was so pretty. Honey, order what you want. I don't really mean that, but, you know. You, and so it's kind of like this. You let somebody in in traffic, right? But you better get one of these. 
Now, I don't know if they do that up here in New Jersey, but in Texas, you darn sure better give one of these, right? You hold the door for somebody and they don't even say thank you. These goddamn little millennials have no idea that their life is on the line around me. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. On the line. I know I could, on a bad spiritual day, I could go to jail. I know that. That's not new information. But I can tell you something. I'm working out at the gym. You know, I was a fitness professional for 30 years. I'm, there's TVs everywhere. And on the news it says, we're going to make the workplace more comfortable clothing-wise. I thought, oh, please, let's let these young kids just come in their jammies. Their jammies, put your hair up in a little do bun and then we'll wonder why you got no self-worth, okay? Get out of bed early, take a shower, look nice, and get your ass to work. You know what I mean? That's how you're going to feel better about yourself. Oh! But, you know what? I'm going to be dead, so rock on. Uh, and, uh, but one of the things is, you know, and, and I swear to God, I feel like I'm channeling my dad. I remember when Jimi Hendrix came on the TV and he's blowing fire out with the, the uh, lighter fluid and everything. And my dad was, uh, he was actually raised in Chicago and lived in uh, Pittsburgh. And he goes, Jesus Christ, turn that shit off. And I remember thinking, Dad, it's Jimi Hendrix, man. Man, man. Don't you remember your parents would go, stop calling me man. And uh, so now... I get to pick on the millennials. Um, and then we're the actor running the whole show, right? I, I, and I love it. I love to say I am the sheriff. Now, I'm better than I've ever been, but I still am the sheriff. I, and I don't pick up stray animals, and, and I typically, if you're, if you're yelling cuss words, I might shut you down. And if you're a small child standing up in a, in a basket in the grocery store, I will definitely go, hey, 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 <laughs> sit down. And when the parents look at you, you go, Takes a village. Just takes. <laughs> I've never had one parent take me on. And there's something about the hey, 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 hey. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, I, and I, I am the cleavage police in Alcoholics Anonymous, although Lee and Bob D want to just shut me down. They say I'd show some cleavage. I did not show cleavage today. Had the wrong bra on. So I kept it closed. But I am the cleavage police in Alcoholics Anonymous. You know why? Because I swear to God, it's like, I mean, I tell the girls, I go, what you don't understand is you'll turn the guys on, but you shut the women out. You've got to have the women. And I mean, if you want to get laid in AA, let's be real. It ain't hard. Okay? You don't, you don't need to show any cleavage. You could be in a potato sack. <laughs> oh, my God. You act like you've got to just, you know, bring it on. Yeah. So, and then I love where it says, you know, we have such entitlement, right? If only my arrangements would stay put, if only people would do as he wished, the show would be great. Everybody, including myself, would be happy, right? And here's the deal. I'm the actor running the whole show. I've got my motives, my delusion, right? My motives are stellar. My delusion, everybody do as I wish. And I run my actions through there. The worst I'm going to get is an A-. minus, And yet everybody's pissed off at me. You know, thank God for the 10th step. The 10th step is not designed if the world's mad at me. It's first part. If you read the 10th step off the wall, it is definitely a damage control step. But by the time you get to the 10th step, you are knowing about your behavior. You know what you need to be watching for. This is not, if you act like you still don't know your defects of character, you haven't written enough inventory. And I'm going to be lenient here, but I think you should write inventory at least every month. But if you haven't written inventory in three months, well, that's too long. That's just how in the world. We want to do it all talk therapy. There is spiritual healing in pen to paper. The key is, is that we get you writing inventory quickly so that you can write inventory in six minutes. It's not the original inventory, for God's sakes. The directions are in four and five for ten. And you can't talk about ten. You can't get into six without ten. Because you're bringing your six step into ten, what you're watching for. So I guess J Jimmy just decided I get all the steps. Okay. Uh, so in my DNA, it's not that I think too much of myself or too little of myself. All I think about is me. I mean, everything filters through me. It's like a liver. It's the, the whole world and its people dominate me. In that state, the wrongdoings of others fancy to real have the power to oh, kill. Yeah, just that. So we're talking about the world, 
and its people. Other than that, have a good day. <laughs> oh my God, that's everything. That's the wind and people. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like the wind on this thin hair. I mean, you get, oh! So this is what I'm talking about. Have you ever walked outside and all of a sudden the weather has just put you in a terrible mood? And you can't get out of it. I'm telling you, we, we, are, we are sensitive people. It takes a lifetime to get over it. I like to use the words of the book. We like to use, you know, if you use terminology from 2019, we need to use the terminology the book has. Controlling is driven. I'm driven by a hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking. Manipulative is self-seeking. I'm a self-seeker even when trying to be kind. Expectations are my ambitions, my little plans and designs, right? Uh, I am a producer of confusion rather than harmony. So how does six and seven play out? Listen to what it says. We have emphasized willingness as being indispensable. Okay? So if we've emphasized willingness, that means to grant the action. Indispensable? Absolutely necessary. Are we now ready to let God remove from us all the things which we've admitted ob objectionable? It's a question that can, you can say no. I remember the first time I thought, well, so you want me to surrender my pride? Forget it. Jeez Louise, I am a self-will magnet, man. You, you, if I gave you the list of stuff that I got it, from young on, you would say, why would you put that toolkit down? I got a job when I got out of high school at a concrete company, big concrete company in Texas. We, we have a lot of stuff to put concrete in, right? I was the front desk, the, the uh, receptionist. They took me to Super Bowls. I mean, oh my God, it was the 70s. It was so fabulous. And uh, I told my boss, I said, you know what, can I, can I take summers off? <laughs> and he looks at me and he goes, like in high school? And I go, yeah, they gave me summers off. <laughs> That's just the tip of the iceberg, people. And there was no passing any sexual favors, you know, whatever. This was just, I asked and I seemed to get everything I asked for. It was unbelievable. That's the toolkit. That's the tool you want me to set down. Very difficult for me. Ask yourself. Turn, turn what I'm saying and ask yourself. Is self-will work, work for you? I'm telling you, some of you guys will say yes. 70% of the time it will. Some of you are bullies. You'll bully somebody into getting it, you know. Some of you guys are so passive, you're going to figure out how to get in through the back door. And this, is, this is me getting transparent so you can figure out you, not judge me, okay? <laughs> then it says, are we ready now to have him move? Are they objectable? Can he now take them all, every one? If we still cling to something we will not let go of, we ask God for the willingness, right? This is so important. So let me explain the new guy doing six and seven and the guy with time. Okay, the new guy, we teach him integrity, dignity, respect. We teach him how to show up. You go pick up the new guy. You hold the door for the people. You walk in this meeting. You don't get up during a meeting, right? We teach these things. These are crucial to teach to all of us when we were new. And then, and we also teach you, you don't get to say the F word anywhere you are. You can't be saying it in the Starbucks line. You can't just be lobbing out the F word anywhere you are. Is that right? I mean, we've got to be very careful when we go to coffee. Sometimes we sit around coffee like we're sitting in a meeting environment. And we are talking ugly. And people are around. We are not showing them what Alcoholics Anonymous is about. I always like to say the guy that has between 18 months and three years, what, what, what he doesn't know that I know is that he is still working a program based on the abstinence of alcohol. And because of that, he is so up, he is the guy who shows up to the meeting, he opens the meeting, he makes the coffee, and at 18 months he's looking around going, oh, this is some bull. Look at all these people, they just rely on me, right? They know I'll fix the coffee, I'll set the room up, and before you know it, man, he is, he is put out and he's got to go. That's 18 months to three years. He's in his meeting and he's just picking people off. <laughs> right? Oh, that idiot's going to share again. <laughs> I mean, we all do that, let's get real. but. The guy with 18 months, three years is working his way out the door. He doesn't realize he's up against that second surrender, the surrender to self. What really is objectionable? He's just coming out of the fog, right? And then you got the guy from three years on. Three to five, you're going to hit a wall. Five to seven, you're going to hit a wall. Seven to 12, you're going to hit a wall. You have to. You know why? Pain is the touchstone of growth. 
You have to hit the, these walls are there so that you will grow. That's what everybody has said, right? And it's a deeper understanding of 10 and 11, but you're taking this six step, all this work you've done in the inventory process, the continued inventory. You are taking all of this defects of character. And don't get me wrong, good defects turn into defects, right? A, a good character turns into a defect. So I'm a good mother. Eh, I'm really a better mother than you are. I'm a good AA. I'm really a better AA than you are. Next time you go into your meeting, wait till somebody says something that flies right in the face of what you just shared. Right? And watch yourself. Watch your thinking. He's such an idiot. Take him. Big head dug in his big mouth. Right? Because I'm better than he is. He's an idiot. He really doesn't know anything. I may go get coffee and one of my compadres is by the coffee. Did you hear, Doug? Such an asshole. Mm. <laughs> and hopefully, she's like, oh, Katie, I, I know that was tough to hear. Well, let's talk about this, just like what Ronnie did to me. Let's bring this around. See, that's my job. I am armed with the facts, man. If I hear you, I'll let you go for a little bit. Or here's one. How about, how about you realize all you do is gossip? Big gossip in AA. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. We can gossip bad. And so all of a sudden you do some inventory on it. You realize you don't want to do it. It's become objectionable. Okay, fair enough. It's objectionable. So now you're with your girlfriends and then you're going to become self-righteous with it. They start gossiping. You go, you know what? The person's not here. And I just don't feel right talking about them. <laughs> because I'm just so self-righteous now. Instead, when you get with your girlfriends, you go, hey, guys, I just did a piece of inventory. Oh, my God, my go gossip's off the chain. So I'm going to really work on not gossiping. You've got to tell them on the front end, right? You know, I had somebody, we were talking some trash because we do. And this one person goes, oh, you know, I am just not comfortable talking about somebody when they're not in the room. And I swear we all thought, get him out of here. Get him. <laughs> now, he was right. Don't get me wrong. But when the book says we grow in understanding and effectiveness, that's what we're talking about, right? We're trying to learn the most effective way because these are the natural defects that we have. I always love to say the, the self-will traps for Katie, right, is um, self-talk. That's a, that's a real tough trap to get in because if we're looking at what's objectionable, self-talk is one that we have a tendency to do. Like say you're getting ready to walk in somewhere that you, you're uncomfortable. You go, you know what, come on Katie, you can do this. You know, this is just, you're, you're worthy of being in there, la, 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 la. You didn't bring God into that at all. The, the whole purpose of these steps is to get us closer to the Creator, not, not necessarily self-build our self-will. We are in a world today that is all about human aid making you okay. You already are okay. Get closer to your creator and have an experience that you won't even imagine. It says, I mean, all of these defects just are amazing at how you're loved by the creator. You've entered the realm of the spirit. It's unbelievable stuff. The, my defects of care, I'm a show-off. I'm a big show-off, and Ellen and I know this one. This, we, we, will, we will railroad you and throw you under the bus if we can get a laugh, right? We can hurt your feelings to get a laugh. And that's not, I don't want to be that person. Well, God, that beautiful pause that Ellen talked about, right, in the 11th step, pause when agitated or doubtful. Pause, ask, remind, and say. Right? Ask for the right thought or action. Reminding myself I'm no longer running the show. Asking for your will, not mine, to be done. Saying, God, help me through this. Please help me. And that pause will come, guys. But you must do the disciplines. See, in order to stay in fit spiritual condition, you've got to do the work. If you've not written inventory in six months, yeah, you're walking around on thin ice. I bet you do get mad at somebody at the Sprint store. Yeah. That's usually the person that's going to get it, is somebody that's not going to give you what you want. Oh, really? That's how we're going to play this game? Okay. <gasps> right? I mean, come on. How many times I love, oh, well, I've got to get into this. I've got about 10 minutes left. Hang in there. I know I'm bringing some heat, but too bad. Okay. Uh, also, nobody's the boss of me. Remember when you were a kid and you go, you know, you're not the boss of me. I still say that in my head. You are not the boss of me. And if Charlie uses a parental tone, oh my God, it's like my head blows off. It just, woohoo! You tell, Katie!
You want that to go down here in the airport? Because I can lose it. And, uh, oh, my God. And I'm also a hypocrite. We all are. True happiness is admitting you're a hypocrite. Right? That's what the fourth step is all about. Is it possible to look at it from an entirely different angle? What angle is that? That I could be either person in this play. If I'm the guy cutting you off in traffic, I could either be the guy that got scared that you cut me off or I could be the guy cutting you off in traffic. On any given day, I'm either person. See, this is not hard for me to see the hypocrite in everything. Um, I love in Bill's story where it says, take them root and branch. Most of us are trimming those branches. The root is the cause, the branch is the effect. We're always trying to fix the effect. Here's what I like to, to hit and really hit home on. is the man on page 73. This is in the fifth step. A lot of us live here. Once again, I'm talking to you if you haven't written inventory. I didn't write a piece of inventory for 15 years. Okay? There's no judgment. There's no blame in my game. These are just the facts about Katie. So it's, I call it the man on page 73. It says they're talking about doing the fifth step. Now remember, 10 is 4 through 9. This vigorous course of action that the fourth step is, is, is 4 through 9, right? So we do four, 4 and 5, and we go home for the hour and the 5. When we've done the hour and the 5 and answered those questions, we ask ourselves the questions in the sixth step. Have you, have you found what's objectionable? You bet your ass I have. I just swallow and digested a ton of truth about me. Right? So when we then say the prayer in the seventh step, we make the list in the eighth step, and the next day we're on the ninth step. There's no sitting on six and seven. You act like we need more information. Hopefully your inventory was pretty humbling. Fair enough? Oh, everybody's quiet now. So this is what we have to look at. If the tenth step is four through nine, it says this is perhaps difficult, right? Telling somebody doing continued inventory, especially di discussing our defects with another person. We think we have done well enough in admitting these things to ourselves. There is doubt in that. In actual practice, that's interesting. In actual practice, my, my buddy Chris Schroeder likes to say, put the word actually in front of every step. We actually took inventory. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, we actually made amends. I'll be darned. It says, we usually find a solitary self-appraisal insufficient. Huh. Many of us thought it necessary to go much further. We'll be more reconciled to discuss our selves with another person when we see good reason to. The best reason first is if we skip this vital step, taking inventory, reading it to another person, we may not overcome drinking. Time after time, we've tried to keep to ourselves certain facts about our lives, trying to avoid this humbling experience. We've turned to easier methods. So what does that mean? Easier methods for men, it's pornography, gambling, working, uh, eating, right? I mean, is this any other 12-step fellowship? You, could, you feel like you need to go there? If you're not careful, you'll go to four other fellowships to manage your alcoholism? It's all alcoholism for us. For women, it's working out, shopping, eating. We like to call it the ism. I have workaholism. I have shopaholism. No, you don't. You have, a, you have a fatal illness of alcoholism. And you're not doing inventory, so you're turning to easier methods. That's all it is. I, I, I lived it. I walked it. I can see it in you in short order. I like to ask somebody, work the steps backwards. You sponsoring anybody? Doing any prayer and meditation? When was the last time you wrote inventory? I mean, you, you can get a beat on somebody in 35 seconds. Having persevered with the rest of the program, right? We're sponsoring, we're showing up, we're doing meetings, we're doing service work. We wonder why we fell. We think the reason is that we never completed our house cleaning. We took inventory all right, but hung on to some of the worst items in stock. We only thought we had lost our egotism and fear. Thoughts italicized because it's delusional in this particular phrase. We only thought we'd humbled ourselves, but we had not learned enough humility, fearlessness, honesty in the sense we find it necessary until we told someone our whole life story. More than most people, the alcoholic leads a double life. He's very much the actor. To the outer world, he presents his stage character. This is the one he likes his fellows to see. He wants to enjoy a certain reputation, but knows in his heart he doesn't deserve it. Trust me, man, I've been there. That's a, that's a tough, tough spot. Six and seven are all about the disciplines of 10 and 11. Watching for resentment, dishonesty, selfishness, and fear, because I know how Katie shows up, right? And they are for me to watch for these things. Ask God at once to remove it, right? Uh, talk to somebody immediately. Uh, make amends quickly. Turn our thoughts. 
Take that into the evening review. How did I do in the 11th step evening review? How was my work? Wow, today was not a good day. Not spiritually fit at all. Take those corrective measures into the next morning on awakening, right? We're to look at our day. This is all six-step stuff. And we act like six-step was just a step and we set it aside. It is everything. That's why there's only two paragraphs in the book. Because we are unable to get rid of these defects of character, right? Um, neither could we reduce our self-centeredness much by wishing or trying on our own power. What? Have you ever heard people say, oh, I'm, I'm working on my defects of character. Good luck. Yeah, yeah your head's going to blow off in a little bit. Um, we can't fix self with self, right? And I'm going to give you just a couple of quick things in the fourth step, which, you know, the boys did such a great job. It's an effort to discover the truth about the stock in trade. It's the truth of how Katie shows up to get her way. Self-manifested in various ways is what uh, had defeated us. It's the toolkit of self-will that's in the third, in the third step, right? Uh, the different ways that I like to show up. I'm self-seeking in all my many ways, right? I'm, I'm self-sacrificing. I'm just a giver. Oh, I'm always looking for an angle. I like to say resentment is fear and drag, right? That's always how it's showing up. Uh, the book implies trouble, right? Always implying trouble. The seventh step says, My creator, I'm now willing that you should have all of me, the good and the bad. These are all my old ideas. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. It's interesting because... My, when I watch the many different ways I've showed up, there, there are so many ways that I can do something and right after I've done it, I see it immediately. That's where I love to make that amends, right? I can tell when I've, I used to say a term, I totally disagree with that. That was a, that was a coin phrase that I used a lot. And I said it when I was doing a workshop with a heavy hitter. And uh, somebody had popped a question out of the audience and I, they answered it and I, said, oh, I totally disagree with what you said. And I just went on. And I didn't see anything wrong with that. Now, I'm sure you see it right away, but I didn't. See, we, we can't see a picture when we're in it. And so we were at the International, and there was a guy standing there, and we were at an event that, that I really didn't support what he was doing, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to blend. And uh, he's standing up against the wall, and he said something. I said, oh, I totally disagree with that. And his head hit the wall based on my aggression in the term. And I saw it right then. And we walked out and I looked at Charlie and I went, I say that a lot. And I mean, I took that as a real serious piece of business. Now you can tell I get very passionate about Alcoholics Anonymous. Oh, I lost my husband behind this and you almost lost me. Charlie will tell you, we were this close to losing Katie. And I know I do too much work on the firing lines. I know there are too many people out there that are scared to death. They're dying in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. And I hate that. I'm a huge fan of the 10th step. Uh, Lee's got some Mark Houston's 10 and 11s that are, uh, they absolutely changed my life. I love where it says that we are to stay in fit spiritual condition, right? To fit myself, to be of maximum service. As a fitness professional, I know what that means. Mark said, good God, Katie, you're an athlete. Been an athlete all my life. He goes, you know what's required? It is a ton what is required. Most people think it's exercise and eating. It is way more than that. It's drinking enough water, getting enough sleep, taking the right supplements, eating the right foods all the time. There's a lot that goes on behind this. I had a sponsee call me and she goes, Katie, I, I just don't believe God can help me lose weight and uh, start exercising. I just, I just don't think he can do it. And, I, and, and so I'm gentle. Don't think I'm that aggressive tonight. I'm a little pumped because I'm with all my buddies. But I told her, I said, well, hold on just a second. Do you really think God can't do that? And she said, yeah. And I said, so are you willing? You got kids? You work? Are you willing to get up at 5 a.m.? Go exercise? Fix your lunches for the week? And she goes, stop right there. I said, oh, yeah, see, you want to blame God. But in order to lose weight and eat right, you're going to have to work really hard. See, we are undisciplined. The book tells us we alcoholics are undisciplined. And we have to have God discipline us, period. So if you're up against something that you can't think you can do, you can get a self-help book. I'm not saying a trainer's not a bad idea. But the bottom line is, you have to be willing to sacrifice. 
Remember, my pride's trying to kill me. I mean, I, 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 my pride is trying to protect me when, in fact, it's really trying to kill me. And I have got to remember that. It is always working an angle. If you're not in the book, please get in the book. And if you are, I'll see you on the firing lines. Thanks for having me.